Welcome to another Tech Tip Tuesday, where this week we take a look at the Custom Property Tab Builder in SOLIDWORKS to show an easy way to enter information for your parts, assemblies, and drawings. If you're not familiar with custom properties, they're used to populate things such as your title block, bills of materials, and provide information to data management. This title block is for the most part filled out, but is missing information for checked, date, and revision. This information is traditionally entered by going to File, Properties, typing in the name of a property, and specifying a value. This is a fairly longhand method to enter this information though, and today we're going to show the Custom Property tab inside of SOLIDWORKS and how you can automatically generate things such as pull downs, date pickers, and text fields to ensure that all the appropriate information is captured at the correct time. You'll notice also in this assembly the bill of materials is missing information for the first two components and the part number for the third. We'll go ahead and generate a custom property tab to enter information into our parts to simplify entering this data. To access the property tab builder, go to Start, All Programs, SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS Tools, and you'll find the application there. When it's initially launched, you're presented with a representation of the tab as it will appear inside of SOLIDWORKS in one group to get you started. Groups are a great way to segregate information and we'll go ahead and give this the title of part information. You can choose whatever information you want to provide and the easiest way to do this is with a text box. You'll notice along the left hand side are six different types of data entry you can provide. Each one can be simply dragged and dropped into the graphics area where you want them. You simply need to specify what information will be entered. In this case, we're going to provide a part number. So for the caption, we're going to enter the value part number, but the custom property used behind the scenes is actually a different value. And it's important to note that this value is the actual custom property itself, where the caption is nothing more than the descriptor for the tab. You can also specify what type of information should be provided, such as text, a date, or a yes and no answer. You can also specify a default value or link the value to one of SOLIDWORKS's many unique properties, such as material and mass. Finally, specify whether or not the custom property is configuration specific or not. We'll also enter a second value for description. Again, we're going to specify a caption, which will be used in the property tab itself, and we have to enter the custom property name. This is important to always remember to differentiate these two. Again, we'll specify that this is applied to all configurations. We're now going to create a second set of information. This will be value for things such as manufacturing information or users who created the file. So we'll call this document management. In here, I want to provide a list of engineers in a date and time picker. To do this, we're going to use the list type and drag and drop this onto the screen. Here, we're going to go ahead and call this created by. And again, like before, we'll enter this for the name of the property we want to reference. Now, you have several different ways of populating this list. You can do this with a list entered right here in the tool an external text file, an Excel file, or an Access database. To keep things simple, let's just enter a list. I'm going to enter a few names into here that can be referenced. We also might want to offer our users the ability to enter a custom value in case the name they're looking for isn't included in our list. We also want to provide the ability for the user to specify the date. To do this, you actually need to choose the text box type and drop this in onto this tab and change the type value to date. I'm going to go ahead and change these values to create a date. Finally, we want to have a place to enter some manufacturing information, so we're going to add a last group box. In this box, we want to provide a checkbox that specifies whether or not this part is purchased or manufactured. So we'll simply drag this checkbox out and we'll call this value purchased. Again, specify the custom property name 
and whether or not the value is checked or unchecked by default. Now here you have the option to choose uh, how you, what you want to call the individual values. For example, when it's checked, we want to use the value yes, and when it's unchecked, we want to use the value no. Let's go ahead and add another drop-down list to provide a list of manufacturers or vendors. Again, enter the value. And this time, instead of typing in the list, we're going to reference a text file located on our computer. Here you can see I have a list of vendors to choose from, but I'll also provide the ability to allow users to enter a custom value. Finally, I want one more text box to enter the vendor part number. And there you have it. All that's left to do is save the file. When you save it, you'll be prompted with the option to save this for a part or an assembly. If you want to use this for parts, make sure you save it as a part type. If you want to use it as an assembly type, make sure to save it for assemblies. You'll want to reload SolidWorks at this point. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. I'm going to right click and open this circlip component and when we expand the property tab builder we can see the information that we've entered is already here in the description. We'll also want to enter a part number. In this case we'll just give it something simple. We'll choose who it was created by, the created date, here's a list of our vendors, and we could enter a number here as well. Once we hit apply and close this document, you'll notice that when we return to the drawing and simply rebuild the drawing, the information has been provided. But let's look at a faster way you can use this. If you open the assembly, you'll notice that the tab defaults to our assembly style that we created. But if we click one of the components, either graphically or on the tree, you'll notice that the tab switches to the different type that we had created. In this way, we can quickly enter information for all of our components. Let's go ahead and quickly populate these with different values and dates. And this is not purchased. And again, we'll grab the piston pin. We'll choose a name and a created date and click apply. When we return to our drawing and update and do a rebuild, you can see that this information is quickly populated. Hopefully this was useful and you find the Custom Property Tab Builder a quick way to enter your custom properties in the future.